World War II. And Gore Vidal, it is an honor to have you back on the program again. No, great pleasure to be here. Very exciting last time. Yes. When you had Ambassador Wilson with his CIA wife who had been exposed <laughs> to, to the winds by the administration illegally. Yeah. You, Poor you, woman. You remember this. I remember it. All the world remembers it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the first time you had, anyone had both of them. Yeah. And uh, they talked. Yeah. I am delighted to have you on um, for part two of your memoir. What, what does it mean to have a memoir that is so much, so thick, so dense that you have to do it in volumes? Well, that's how you do life, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do life in volumes, too. And the first one was my first 40 years. Everything interesting happened then, so. <laughs> then the second one, uh, which you hold in your hand, is my, uh, the last 40 years. And uh, at one point, I thought I should really call this between obituaries. Everybody's dying, you know. And, mm. uh, but then suddenly, uh, it's a kind of a whole new area. You rethink people that you've known along life's doleful journey. And it was kind of, kind of interesting. Recalling old friends like Tennessee Williams and Paul Bowles and people who are now dead. And one fascinating thing about it, for a memoir, is you can, uh, you can tell the truth. Not that there were any great lies to be told, but uh, you don't want to hurt people's feelings, so there are whole areas you stay away from. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I got a call from uh, a friend of mine had, had died, and I got a call from Johnny Carson, who was retired at the beach, Malibu. And uh, he said, I'm sorry about Howard's death and so on. And I hadn't talked to Johnny in about a year. And I said, what happened to you? I know you retired from NBC, <laughs> but uh, I thought we'd be hearing from you. Oh, he said, you know, it's what they call semi-retired at the beach. I said, no more Las Vegas? I mean, to keep him away from there would have been something. He said, no, I can't do that. And he had just turned down going to a friend's memorial. And everybody in town was going to be there. And the widow got very upset when John said, I can't go. And she said, well, come on, you know, this, this was his producer who died, Freddie de Cordova. Uh -huh. And John said, well, I have a problem, which I'll just tell you. And then he just told me on the telephone. He said, people will expect to see Johnny Carson again, and that's not who I am anymore. I can't even pretend it. I can't even mimic him. I said, no, you know, I said, you're doing pretty well on the phone. <laughs> he said, no, I'm not. He said, I am forcing it. To be out in public and people expect me to be me, I can't do it anymore. And I went, what is this all about? He sounded perfectly normal on the telephone. And then a week or so later, he was dead, and it was cancer of the lung and throat. He lost his voice. So the Carson voice, which everybody in America knew, he couldn't do that anymore. And it's that dry voice that suddenly broke up a whole crowd. And when he couldn't do that, he stayed at the beach. Let me, I'm glad you shared that. That's a, a fascinating um, story, which is what makes your life, this point-to-point -point navigation of a life so fascinating, the people that you've known and those mm -hmm. stories that only Gore Vidal can tell. You, you used a phrase a couple minutes ago that, that I want to go back and pick up on because I'm fascinated by it. Um, to rethink people. To rethink people. What? Well, you know, as you know them, you know, life is a continuum. Life is just there. It just goes on day by day. Mm -hmm. And one by one, each of us stops. Well, when one of us stops and another survives, you really think, well, what was that all about? How well did I know so-and-so? And 
Did I get them right? Or when they got angry about something or other, were they right and I was wrong? Uh, this is just reflection over people that you've known. What's the value in rethinking people? To find out what you think. Somebody said, you know, what's the value of writing? And the value of writing is to find out what you think. If you ask me what do I think about the agricultural uh, policies of the current administration, uh, it would take me, if they had any, it would take me some time to work it out. <laughs> so I'd have to sit and start writing. And then as you write, you begin to, oh, that's... That's what I think. Yeah, and that's what I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. and how they screw this up and that and so on. In other words, the act of writing is the act of thinking. The act of thinking leads sometimes to thoughts and then worse, this is hated by our rulers, leads to ideas and they hate them because the first idea might be go home <laughs> <laughs> speaking 